Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you guys can hear me. I guess that is a yes. You know, I need to shut off a light. Uh, look, this looks funny, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you guys to this evening Zoom. And it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to hear me because my connection is bad. So if it start breaking up, I will simply take away the video. I also have a backup on the line, just so you guys know. Henry is online as another uh, host here. So you don't get connected away from today's Zoom. Because I think we are all as excited as me. This Zoom will be interesting. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the pleasure to have Scott Lomu on from Digger. Okay? I think if you are like me, you have experienced something that is simply mind blowing. I was on the line yesterday. Hi, guys from UK and Spain and all over. I see you here. I see you, Patrick, Gavin and everyone. I've been also uh, in calls today to Australia. Uh, guys, it's, uh, people are so happy. That's what it's all about. They are so happy to finally see something that is real. They are happy to see something that they truly believe in. And people are super excited. Don't you agree? I think everyone up with the thumbs if you agree with me. It, it is simply crazy how people are feeling about this business. And I want to remind you with that, that yesterday we had Gib on the line, correct? I mean when you also can give, because I believe that you can need to give in order to get. That's the true meaning of network marketing, guys. That's how I see it. It needs to be built so you can give something forward, something good. And what is better than that to actually be able to give additional value to people? Create a real additional value through nodes. I think more and more when we are following this, I think you as me starts to understand more what kind of possibilities here are. Now it is up to us, ladies and gentlemen, to be responsible and to learn in order to do it in the best way. Don't you agree? That is something that I at least, that's what I'm feeling very strong for, that we can do it in the right way. Now, I just was on a call also to US uh, with a, uh, few others and guys uh, this is this will be insane the news i got for how you can qualify in the win wheel uh, you know write it up we've been speaking about you know that you maybe might be able to you know do something fractionally correct when you guys get the news on what has been agreed upon by tomorrow okay you guys will smile even bigger because they actually agreed to something really crazy with the forex. Look forward to that. How would it be if you could, you know, uh, benefit, you know, hundred percent towards it? You know, you know that would be cool, wouldn't it? So you know, keep the ears open, the eyes open over the next twenty-four hours, guys, because I saw again the proof that everybody wants to give the best. You guys understand what I mean? This is not a cash grab. And that made me so happy because I saw that every single one involved is very much dedicated to giving you, to giving us the best thing that they can, the best value out of it. And today is another example of that. We have Scott Lamo here, I hope. Scott, can you put your hands up? And I'm looking forward to see your presentation and you tell about yourself. What is Digger and who are you? That will Excellent. be very interesting to, you know, to listen into. Thank you. I will leave the ball. Yes, you. very excited. I'm glad, uh, man, there, there's a lot of you guys on today. This is, this is crazy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very excited to be, to be a part of, of this group uh, with all the other blockchain projects that, that are going on. Um, it's it's very humbling and an honor to be a part of this and to be to be able to work with with you guys. So just a just a brief background on me. So about uh, ten or eleven years ago, I got involved in the the gold mining world and I was mining 
in uh, mostly in, in Africa. So I was in the country of, of Ghana for, for several years, um, mining gold and doing, doing the best I could, you know, as a, as a rookie gold miner, not having a lot of experience doing it. And, uh, you know, at, at that time, the, the, the real estate market had crashed, you know, here in the United States and, and worldwide. And we were looking for a way to, to get back in the game. And the, the opportunity of gold mining came along and, and I had never gold mined before. I, I'd heard of a group of guys out here in the United States that were going to Africa and buying gold and, and uh, trying to, you know, buy low and sell high. <laughs> So we said, hey, let's let's go out to Ghana. So we we went out to Africa and we started gold mining. Um, and in the process of, of learning how to gold mine, um, somebody somebody had heard about us um, and said, hey, look, there's a couple of guys from the United States. They don't know what they're doing, <laughs> but but they're gold mining out in Africa and they've never even been to Africa. And so somebody had had uh, uh called Discovery Channel. Um, and they said, hey, you, you need to go see these guys. So Discovery Channel actually flew out to Africa and, and saw my partner and I, and they watched us for about a week. They followed us with a camera, everything we were doing. And at the end of the week, one of the, the, one of the producers said, all right, I've been filming all over the world. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff, but I've never seen anything like this. And one of you is going to die and we want to get it on camera. <laughs> and that's basically the way it went. And so shortly following that experience, uh, they sent a crew out and they started to to record my my partner and I. And they they created a TV show called Jungle Gold. And Jungle Gold was just the adventures of my partner and I trying to figure out how to make money for our families in gold mining and and we were doing you know we, again we didn't know what we were doing we were just following the lead of the of the uh the local miners telling us what to do what equipment we had to buy so we're getting investors and and all all of our follies and all of our trial and error are unfortunately for us well documented on discovery channel and uh so that started our gold mining adventure and in that process, you know, we, we realized that there's a lot of downside to gold mining. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, it's very dangerous. Number three, it's very harmful to the environment. But when you're in Africa, there's a lot of these villages, you know, because the gold is just out in the middle, you know, of, of, the, of the bush. And there's all these villages, but all the villagers, they want the gold miners to come because they make money, even if it means they have to tear up their cocoa crops, they have to, you know, strip the land and do all these harmful things. They want the gold miners there simply because it, it brings in some revenue, even if it's short-sighted. And so there's a lot of uh, unscrupulous gold miners out there um, from all over the world, and they would go out there and just destroy the land, mine illegally, and do all these, these really bad things. Um, and, and so I, so I was involved in the gold mining space in Ghana specifically for about five years. And, and if you want to find out why we're not there anymore, you can, you can Google jungle gold and find out <laughs> all, the, all the bad things that, that led to our, our quick demise in, in the gold mining world. And so I got back and, and other opportunities came up. I had a chance to do some gold mining in the Amazon out in a, a country called Guyana in South America. So my partner and I went there and, and the same thing is happening there where the gold is, is you're tearing down the, the rainforest, you're digging up the gold, you're polluting the rivers. And it's just a, a very unsustainable way to do gold mining. And so through that experience, and then and then we just, we moved operations to the, back here to the United States, where we were gold mining in Nevada and Arizona, and we were working on projects out there. And all the while, we're looking at the cost and and the time and the and, and all of the the things that are that are the negative to gold mining because everybody wants gold, 
everybody wants to, you know, they feel like they have to get gold and stick it in a vault and it's, and it's a safe bet against inflation and against, you know, currencies and all this is true. But the downside and what it takes to actually get gold out of the ground is a, is a major, major problem. So when my, when my gold mining days, you know, finally came to an end, you know, I, I was, we, some partners and I were, were just thinking that there's got to be a better way. And at about that time, a lot of gold backed crypto coins, we were starting to see them appear on the market. Okay. But usually what's done is that people would say, okay, I've got a whole bunch of gold here and I'm going to put it in a vault and I'm going to release this coin. And so it's going to be a, this gold backed coin and all the gold is sitting in a vault over here in, you know, Switzerland and, and every coin that we mint is going to be backed by, you know, a specific amount of gold. And we started looking at that going, well, this is an interesting concept. So, so what happens if that person wants to actually cash out their gold? And so we started researching all these companies. Well, come to find out 90% of all the companies that came onto the market that just released a coin, just, you know, they did what's called an ICO, an initial coin offering. They release a coin, they mint it, they, they sell the coin and they say, oh, it's backed by gold. Most of them were a scam and are out of business. And we started looking in, okay, did people actually get their money back? Were they able to cash in on the gold? And the answer is emphatically no, they didn't. They were not able to actually, even though they said it was gold backed. Correcto so mundo. Thinking, Correcto know, mundo. We have we all been seeing it. We all yeah, been seeing exactly. it. Absolutely. So how what, what what happened from that, if I can tell you? Can you tell us? What have you done since that? Because I already know what is coming. Can you tell yes. us? What, how have you solved it? <laughs> so there, there, we started thinking there has to be a better way, not only better gold mining, but to, to have a better uh, uh, product. And so when I heard of, of this group, you know, with, with all the, 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 uh, the blockchains that they have, the success, you know, they've had with, with, you know, green and, and give and, and all these others. Um, we thought this is the place to create a, a gold backed opportunity. And, and when I, when I met with these guys, it was the biggest no brainer. I looked at the projects that they did. I looked at their history. I looked at, at that every blockchain that they had had a purpose it had something behind it, not just let's create a coin. And so we we sat down and we developed this this amazing concept of Digger, and uh, Digger stands for uh, Digital In Ground Reserves. So we what the idea is because I firsthand I had to sit there, I had to think about my past experience of harming the land and and ruining some of these villages. And so we thought, okay. What if we did a gold backed coin, but we left the gold in the ground? Now, 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 this is a concept that, that people have a hard time with because they go, wait, hold on. How am I going to access it? No, no, no. You, that's the point you don't need to access it. It's already exactly. in the vault. <laughs> exactly. It's in the safest vault in the world. You yes, it's in the mountain. Exactly. And, and it's safe. It's never going to come out of the ground. But the value can come out of the ground by digitizing the gold. Of course. So, so if you Scott, have a Scott, have you invented this yourself, or is it a big team behind? You know, this this was the idea of a lot of guys that we're currently working with. A lot of the guys that you guys are. It's, it's crazy, Scott. You know, and I've seen the devastation. You know, I'm living in Thailand, and I see the opal mining. Oh. You know, I see the rubies. You know, it's it's guys. It's it's uh, cyanide even in it, you know, to, to purify and yeah. yeah, it goes straight into the rivers and into the ground and uh, these mud holes in Africa where they are mining. I mean, it's uh, people are developing cancer, they are developing disease. So how well doesn't this fit with uh, then with uh, switch and with give and with all the other ones? Exactly. It, it fits so perfectly because we have a purpose. Our purpose is to, is to 
own the mining rights in these little villages, but never pull it out of the ground. And now we get to benefit the villagers. So, so if I go into a village and I buy the mining rights, they still benefit financially from those mining rights, but we use some of the proceeds <laughs> From the digger, uh, uh, from the from the digger company, from from the node sales, and we benefit that community. We 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 build water wells. We teach them sustainable farming. We build schools. We we do all the things, and we bring them into this ecosystem. Unbelievable! So, Unbelievable! So, this. so now, a, 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 an eighteen-year-old boy in the village in Africa who's never had an opportunity before can now be brought into the digital age. Can now he can be a node owner, so he could be digitally mining in his village in the middle of nowhere and saving his village. Unbelievable, Scott! And all on a smart contract, I assume. Exactly, of course, yeah, <laughs> all on a smart contract, and it's and it's a way for for us to still, you know, to when you decentralize and you give the power back to the people. It allows them because some of these countries are a little bit corrupt, right? And it's hard. Yeah, for a little to, bit, yes, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> it's hard for some of these companies to make it out. But when you yeah. make it out, and and yeah. they're working for it, right? The, the, when, by running these the, the nodes and, and and doing the 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 work required to earn your reward, there's a sense of pride. There's a sense of this isn't a handout because a lot of these companies will come into the villages, give them stuff, and then leave. But we're coming into these villages and giving them an opportunity to create wealth for their families and to actually work for it, you know, because the hardest workers I've ever seen on earth are in these villages in Africa. They make almost nothing. They work all day. So why don't we help them work smarter? Why don't we help bring them into the digital age? Why don't we help them to create wow. wealth for their family? And so, wow. and at the same time, save the village. So we do this in Africa. We do this in South America. We even do it here in the United States because by digitizing the gold, okay, it creates value. It, 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 it still allows you to have that, that value of gold in digital currency. So for our node owners, it's the same thing. You're, by buying a digger node and participating in, in this ecosystem that we've created, you can know that you are you are creating work uh, wealth for yourself, and you're doing good. You are helping these people in these in these marginalized communities who are outside of this global economy, and you are and, and saving the environment at the same time exactly. because it is a catastrophe. Mining in That's itself exactly. for only the purpose of putting it in a vault is madness, isn't it? Absolutely. It's that that is exactly what you said right there is is the purpose of, of digger. It is madness. Yeah. You do not need to do it. The store of wealth can be held within, you know, within the, the coin that the reward that you're earning from from the node. So, yeah, it's I want to say something on this, Scott, because it just so happens that uh, one of my good friends and business partner is the CEO of the largest uh, uh, privately held a bank in Laos and they have a lot of mining and exactly these things I've been running into and I want the members on the call to understand this that today it is possible to know very closely how much gold is in the ground you do not right. need to peck in the dark guys so no. that's why I said it is today madness of mining something for the sole purpose of putting it in the vault when you like Scott says you can have the mining right to it Exactly. And protect it by not digging it up. That that's, that's exactly right. And so we we've been working with a company that has technology where you can scan the ground. So they have these. It's a satellite, and it'll scan the ground and tell you what's in the ground. So yes. you can with 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 absolute certainty what is in the ground. It's not a guess. There's no guessing work involved. So we know. When we and we're working on multiple projects right now with gold mines in Arizona, in in uh, Ghana, in Guyana, in Nevada, and so we know what's there. We know what's in the ground, and so we can tell you, look, there is a store of value in the ground, 
and it's going to stay there and it's in the many 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 billions can, of dollars. can i guys can i say something that is so brilliant it's not only that guys that you protect the, the planet you know what is so brilliant guys on this call is that it's actually cheaper for you to obviously secure the value like that you do not need to plan it dig it you know uh, clean it up so you actually have no cost in even you know putting even the shuffle in the ground Brilliant. It's, it's exactly right. And as long as you you control the mining rights and you own the mine, it's there. The value's there. Exactly. You do not need to dig it up. And and also, you know, what it also does is it helps the value of gold go up. Because if, you, if you're not bringing it out of the ground and putting it into the market and flooding the market, it helps keep the price of gold high, which is great. But it, but it keeps it the gold safe where it's at, and it does not need to. Once you, once you have the concept of you can digitize the gold and keep it in the ground, it's it's brilliant, and and it's it's really that's why we're we're confident that the purpose that we have to to save these these villages and these mines all over the world, but also just to start digitizing gold, it's it, it, we're, we're going to revolutionize the gold industry, and it starts with Digger. Any any other questions? Any how how long how long have you guys been working on this? Did you say so? So we we have been working on it for quite a while. As far as like you know, putting the concept together. What we've been working on now is is with that the gold scanning technology and securing all the gold claims. So there's a lot of work in the background that has to be in place be, before we you know officially launch Digger. But it's all good stuff. It's all the, the the gold mines and the and the you know of course doing all the the contracts. But it's it's you know and we've been very well received. And when we talk about this concept, it takes a lot to to you know go into a village and convince somebody you don't need to pull the ground up and that there's a better benefit by keeping it in the ground. And so it, it does. It definitely. Uh, has taken some mind shift with with a lot of the people that we're working with but once they get it once it clicks it's it's a very uh smooth quick process and so yeah we're we uh you you know we're getting ready to start launching our node and but again when you have that node work it work that node you know make sure you're you're earning your your digital rewards and that and and also know that by doing so you're doing a lot of good in the world and uh, we'll, we'll be leading the forefront on the digital digital world age gold age and also in, in doing a lot of good can i ask you a question about that sure. because i i it was flashing in my brain that if i believe in the project i want to yep. participate i get my node i activate it i run it obviously i mean rewards and so on now what I understand is you told me that you are already having several projects in the pipeline. Yep. Is it correct assumed that what by participating in this project, you will all the time add value to securing more of these? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so we have we have four now, and we, we're looking at the largest unmined gold mine in the world down north of Tucson, Arizona. So, so they have a report called a 43101, which is kind of the traditional way to, to value what's in the ground. And this 43101 report uh, shows that there's over a trillion dollars of in-ground assets, not just gold. It's, it's gold, it's silver, it, it's, it's copper. It's because Digger isn't just gold. That's where we originated, but it's all in-ground assets. And you know, we are constantly working on more projects. Our, our goal as a company is to digitize all the gold in the world. And so we have a specific, we have a specific uh, team member that we've brought on, a guy named David, um, and he is specifically in charge of gold mine acquisition. That's all he does all day. He, he is out there and it's all over the world. He's, he's looking at one right now in the Congo. Um, with with some of our uh, some of our other partners have access to one of the largest like the third or fourth largest producing it's a producing active gold mine and uh, we want to buy the rest of their rights because they've got 
a ton of acreage that they haven't mined yet. And we want to digitize it so that it doesn't get mined. So the Congo, Arizona, um, all over where, you know, where we have a, a team that's looking in, uh, in other areas where we're trying to find areas where we can have the most impact. And that, that tends to be South America, um, uh, uh, there, there's some in the Philippines and in Africa, because those are the areas that get really taken advantage of and where it's doing the most uh, uh, harm to the environment and to the people. But at the same time, remember, it's a twofold. It, it's digitizing and securing the gold, but it's bringing these marginalized communities into the digital world. We want to give power to those people who traditionally would never get it. And so now they can they can run it, they can run nodes, they can they can start earning their rewards and be independent of some of these governments where they will never have a fighting chance. The hierarchy of how gold mine works is pretty, the government gets their cut, the landowner, the, the mine owner, the, the cocoa, and the guy at the bottom gets nothing, but he takes all the harm. He's the one whose drinking water is full of mercury and, and his cocoa crop has been demolished, but he gets nothing out of it. And so now this opportunity allows them to, to uh, come into this digital world and we're gonna, we're, we're gonna make some people mad, but we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you another question that, uh, that came to my mind here when you were uh, explaining? And actually, we mentioned it uh, through my question before, because when you don't dig it out from the ground, you still have a kilo price of gold, as an example, or ounce, yes. or however you want. What are the for? What is the formula? What, in between, what kind of you know numbers are we talking uh, that it's that is more profitable to do it in your way, even though you are you know giving away the value for the community around? You are saving the environment on top of it. But what's the formula? Because I'm interested about that because it has to be a good business, correct? <laughs> Uh, it, it does. Yeah. And so, you know, typically the, the, the cost to pull gold out of the ground, depending on what type of mining you're doing. So if it's placer mining, you know, you can get it out of the ground for, you know, 40% of what a kilo costs. If it's hard rock mining, it's more like 50 to 60%. So we, we take off the cost of the mining. So let's just say, uh, so right now an ounce of gold USD is $1,800 today. So we value that and we say, okay, because we don't have to pull it out of the ground, there's no mining. So you're going to take $900 off of it. So we say we value the in-ground asset minus the production cost and a little bit more. So we're trying to be a little bit more generous. So, <clears throat> so let's just say $1,800 today, we would say that the value of the gold in the ground because we don't have the cost to pull it up, we don't say, oh yeah, it's worth $1,800. Well, it's not really worth $1,800 an ounce if it costs you 900 to pull it out. So the formula exactly. that we use is we, we subtract out the mining cost and plus 10%. So we'll say that the value of each ounce in the ground is probably more like $750, right? Because if we had to pull it out, which we don't yeah. want to, want to harm that's that's you know what you'd be left with after your mining costs so so when you do the bath we're looking at each ounce at about 750 dollars worth of value but when we have multiple gold mines with billions one of the mines that we're trying to cut a deal with right now down in arizona has a has a 43 101 report that has six billion Six billion, and that is one of of many projects that we have. Yeah, so we yeah. have hundreds of billions of dollars in in ground assets. Even after you factor out the cost to do the to actually pull it out of the ground, if that ever had to happen, which which it won't. Uh, yeah, it's still billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of in ground assets to support this node. It's it's phenomenal. I simply I simply love it. I simply yeah. love it because I, I love numbers and 40 to 60 percent in cost of pulling it out. What happens when you put that one into something good then and profit for people being a part of the noting? That's right. That's pretty interesting. Exactly. So so we 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 love our project because of the good that it does, but because of the you know, and gold is only getting higher in value. And with, with what's happening with inflation, with, with economies all around the world, gold is only going up. And so we love the fact that we've got this, 
this backing our our project. You know, we're not a stable coin or anything like that, but the the fact that we've we've got these assets on the books is, is very you know comforting to we hope that's comforting to our, our node owners knowing that we control billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of gold to back the project. <laughs> that, that should be yeah. that should be yeah. quite a start, wouldn't it? Yeah. What is the timeline? Uh, Scott, what is the timeline for you know being up and running and and, and yeah. securing and getting it on smart contracts and so on? We, we are going to be pre-selling the the digger nodes uh, imminently within within a couple of weeks, and so that's going to be happening immediately. The the pre-sell that the node will be ready. Uh, I'd say within the last time I talked to the development team, it's it's no more than than a month or so out, maybe two months, and then we can start mining. But we're pre-selling. We're going to be pre-selling here in the next week or so, and people are lining up because they want those early nodes. <laughs> I believe you. So how this works? I believe you. Yeah. So the, the early the early you. adopters, the ones who get their nodes going first, are are earning the most rewards. And so we we got a lot of people very very interested in in doing a lot of uh. Of, uh <laughs> Pre pre ordering, I would say it it feels pretty comforting to know that we have one node called Switch, and one yeah. node called the Digger, and another yeah. called Green, and a Blue, and a Liberty, and a Gib, and yeah. and and. Well, and there, you know, there's some really good crossover between us as well. Like for example, Liberty, you know, we 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 like to, we get these veterans and uh, they're the ones who go out to south america and and uh africa because they know how to win the hearts and the minds of the people yes and some to- of them been there even in the army they've been oh, there yeah. maybe Definitely, yeah. yeah. Some of the guys we were talking to when we were telling them about the africa project they're very excited because they've worked there before and they know people yeah. and they like to go back and they and, and these are guys who are so good at at creating relationships with the chief and with the government and, and, and doing all these things that allow Digger to operate freely. And, and it's just great because we get, we get to work with, and, and with give. So, so you have give that that's a big part of, you know, we, we want them to be a big part of what, because, you know, they're, they're out there to help people Liberty. We want to use some of their people. And so there's some good crossover. We, we just feel like it's just the best way to go to use some of the, some of the assets of these other blockchains and, and work together as much as we can. Yeah, I see. I see a lot of crossovers, and and uh, it, it's been simply blowing my mind what what has become available to normal people to participate yeah. in what is going to happen next. You know, we all know that banking is outdated. We all know yeah. that mining is also outdated. That's why it's so much polluting. Because they're exactly. using the cheapest way to get it out of the ground and uh, without any kind of, you know, respect to the nature because they can't That's afford right. it. That's because right. they're not paid the, the top dollar for the gold, like in Philippines and, you know, Africa and so on. They're getting very poorly paid, correct? A- absolutely. And, you know, a quick story, you know, we, we hire all the villages. When I used to mine in Ghana, we would hire all the villages and they're just doing what they know how to do. I, I saw this young boy you know, when we, when we gathered up the gold, you know, it, it comes in like a little, there was like a little uh, a ball of gold and to separate out, you know, to, to make sure all the gold gets, you know, attracted to each other, they use mercury. And so I saw this boy, Yes. he, he put the gold in a handkerchief and dumped the mercury in, and then he, you twist it uh, to get them to separate the mercury out. And then he stuck the ball in his mouth and spit the mercury out. And I was just, oh. horrified. I couldn't believe it. And I said, never again. We we there. We this has to be done differently. And so, so now I look back on my experience in Africa. You know, and and also, if you guys know the TV show Gold Rush, the also the, the one of the biggest shows on Discovery Channel. Todd Hoffman was a star of that show. He's on board with us, and so he's going to help us do projects in in uh, Alaska because he <laughs> wants to save the tundra. But so you know, when, so Todd and I sat down together. He flew out here. And we talked about, you know, what's going on in the mining world and, and the good that we can do. Uh, but with with the platform that we have, you know, because I, I'm on record, I'm on TV doing the bad mining. And so this is kind of my my repentance process and, and my, my evolution. And there has to be a better way. So for me, it's 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 kind of come full circle to where I was out there doing the mining 
and and now through because of this amazing organization and and because of the blockchain technology they developed i get to go back into these communities and do some good and and make sure that the the the, the type of mining that i was guilty of that i participated in that that i can repair that through the digger blockchain uh, this blockchain is phenomenal that all the people here are incredible and i'm just i'm grateful that that i have this chance to circle back around and to do something very very good by by bringing more power to the people by bringing them into the to the blockchain and by saving their communities it's just a real blessing it, it, it truly is i look back on my mining days i spent years there and sometimes i asked i used to ask myself what was it all for I was away from my family. It was dangerous. I got shot at. We got chased out of the country, all these things. And all of a sudden, this opportunity comes back. And it's just been so humbling. And, and it's just I'm just so full of gratitude that that it allows me to, to participate in helping these people. I thought I was helping them the first time by, by helping mine in their communities, but it wasn't true. I was helping me. Now I get to truly go back and help them. And everybody that participates in the Digger blockchain, know this, you are doing a lot of good. You are helping people all over the world in these marginalized communities to, to bring them into this blockchain. It's not just for the 1%. It's not just for the rich. The, the, the blockchain is for everybody. And it's, it's such a humbling opportunity to be involved with it. Can I ask something about that? Because it, this sure. is really, it's, it's mind blowing and it's uh, so informative. Uh, and I know you did your homework. I, I, you know, I don't need to ask that. Uh, a question is the following with these, you know, um, these mining rights and so on, will they be, you know, like uh, imprinted on the blockchain or how, do, how does it work? Yeah, we, we've talked a lot about that as far as the, uh, the so there's a couple different things with that, the, the mining rights, yes, and so it'll be implemented into the blockchain, um, because we have to own those rights. And so uh, yeah, I, I understand that it's more complicated than my question. <laughs> and, and it gets yeah, it very, it yeah. gets very, you know, detailed. But with the legalities, and this company needs to, you know, hold uh -huh. it with uh, even a 51 percent in some countries of the government i mean i understand that but is, my question was really not that technical <laughs> because then we get technical yeah yeah it's th th there are a lot of people with a lot of law degrees working on those things <laughs> way way above my pay grade on on how to do that even even with the the verification process we're working on a work on a program right now to where the users right you guys who own the node blockchain you know with with this uh you know proof of work concept you can verify you can help us so so we have this gold scanning technology right it goes out it scans the the ground it, it tells us what's in the ground but the users can help verify that we we're trying to put together some ideas you know based on you know some of the other concepts with some of the other blockchains we have we're thinking okay how cool would it be if each user got to verify a piece of that gold mine, you know, through through the blockchain. So, uh, however it works, however the developers, however the legal team figure it out, but each user gets to verify those, uh, you know, small pieces of each gold mine. We're we're still thinking that that part through, but yes, the 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 ownership rights, the mining, that will all be on the on the blockchain. So, will, how will it also be on the blockchain? blockchain? Yes. Yeah, Scott. Will yes. It, sorry, sorry for you know the connection is breaking up. So, guys on this call, if it seems that I'm interrupting, it's not by purpose. Okay. <laughs> so I hope that uh, you didn't get interrupted by me, Scott. No problem. No, you're good. Okay. Now, uh, is it the same with uh, with uh, the offsetting or the goodwill, so to say, that goes into the communities? Is that also imprinted on the blockchain? Yeah, we're we're trying we're thinking of ways we, to to do that as well. Um, yeah, imprint it on the blockchain because it, it, it's a little unorthodox. Yeah, yeah but okay, that's maybe the wrong technical term even. But I mean, is it is yeah. it a smart contract on it in some kind of way? Correct. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah we'll sorry, sorry. Back. It was a bad question, same as the legal okay. part of it. I, I actually should have understood better. I'm an educated lawyer. <laughs> okay. so, 
that was why. Thank you, Scott. I think we have got much more out of this call than anybody expected. <laughs> Even if we were very excited about it personally, at least, yes, because it just opened, it blew my mind even more. Because yeah. just by hearing digitally indexed, you know, and understanding yeah. what you were wanting to do and seeing yeah. what you, how you actually do it, it just blows my mind. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I wonder how come that nobody did it before? Because, you know, governments and, and uh, these uh, human rights organizations, Greenpeace, uh, whoa, they will love you. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah, Pe people have been trying it, but it wasn't until I got with these guys that we said, why can't we do this and this and this? And, and, and we had the benefit of looking at what other people had done and why they failed. And so when you add the purpose behind it and you realize that it never needs to leave the ground, and that's a concept that people have a hard time accepting, but when it, when it clicks and you realize it never needs to leave the ground, it's a game changer. So it is, it is yeah. truly a game changer and the, the community that is and the infrastructure created by connect is simply right. mind blowing and what Absolutely. can keep on being added over the over the months years yep. it's crazy it's it crazy yeah. if you believe guys in crypto if you believe in blockchain if you believe in a better world where we are not uh, because of greed or only capitalistic reasons and stupidity <laughs> uh, then i think this is uh, the right place to be i am very proud to have been you know, listening into your story and seeing Thank what you, you want to do. Thank you. True pleasure. Anything more that you would like to say to the members? No, that's that's all. I'm just uh, I'm grateful to be a part of this and and hope to to work with you guys in in the future. And I'll, any help, any questions you have, uh, reach out. I'd I'd love to. I, I actually had a. I had a, a, a big prepared uh, slide presentation, and I th but we started talking. I thought, no, 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 it's so much better just to talk. In, uh, and can uh, you so do I'm, me a favor? Can you do me yeah. a favor, Scott? Can you shoot yeah. that over to me that presentation? Because I will Absolutely. cut this video. I will, uh, uh, you know, make it, and I will put the slides on it because I am hundred oh, percent. Everything great. came. Excellent. So the members won't miss anything. They will get it cut with that, with the slides, you know, with the Perfect. texts and so on. And thank you so much for your time. Excellent. So if you could make thank sure you. that I get that uh, deck, you know, and then we are fine. Absolutely. You got it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Thank you, uh, Scott. Right. Thank you, Scott. So, guys, what do you guys think about that? Can you please open your cameras if you uh, will? How how did you like this? Because I must say I like it a lot. Okay, I see people smiling. Ah, uh, I am simply my my brain is uh, boiled uh, after all of these uh, things. It is if I didn't know that it's real, I wouldn't believe it. Okay, because it is crazy how just thinking, you know, turning, you know, the, the, you know, thinking outside the box can change, be a total game changer. And I can tell you guys, like I said, I was just on a call. I was just on a call before with Connect, with a few people there, where we were discussing how to not create panic tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, because I said to them that do not in any case open every function at the same time, because then we're going to have a chaos. I've been on calls today, guys, with people that have 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, 100,000, I don't know what, that just wants to onboard directly. So we will have now discussions still tonight, guys, on how to switch on tomorrow. You guys understand? How do we do it in a not chaotic manner? I ask them to please, guys, because I need to communicate. I need to do directly the webinars with you guys to show you guys how things work so we don't get lost. Is that something that we all understand? Okay. So once I know this, I will start posting, get ready that you guys get information when to be on what call. 
I have seen and uh, seen the you know wind wheel, the back office, all is running smoothly there. It's tested, all is ready to go. Okay. I also know that we have nodes that we want to distribute. Now, hold on, guys, because we need to now follow simple constructions, uh, uh, instructions. You guys will get instructions, let's say every three hours, every six hours, and so on. Do this step, do this step, do this step. Because if you don't do that, guys, you're going to have a headache. Believe me, something will go wrong. It's two systems that needs to, you know, speak to each other. That will slowly over time, over the next months, become one system. So you guys, guys understand that in only a few weeks, they haven't been able to build, you know, a seamless system. That's pretty, you know, pretty clear to understand, correct? So we have two systems that needs to go into each other. Win wheel, connect. We become connect tomorrow, okay? We are in the connect then. So we will start switching on what I have understood. Uh, they will give us the timeline and watch the telegram now and also in the private leadership groups. Follow it so you know that, okay, this is when what happens. Very important now. And we will start then to open up the system. And I can tell you guys, it's looking very beautiful, the back office also. It is a huge upgrade and also the compensation plan. And what I said before, did you listen into that? You will be extremely happy for what the 500 times rebuy will do. Okay. <laughs> We've been speaking about fractional nodes before and so on. We've been speaking about bundling. When you get this information I just got in the next hours and within tomorrow, you know, when we open, you will scream. You will be happy. Okay. You will say thank you, thank you, because it's more fair than I ever thought it could ever be. Okay, <laughs> it is so good. So you will be proud to be a Win Wheel member. You will be proud to be part of Connect. I think you are already, but even more so. So that's all that I have for now, guys, for you. Please, questions that you have up. Okay, to the upline and you guys that are in direct contact in my groups, you know, and so on. I know most of you, if not all, you know, you will get your answers. Just ask. Okay, can we do it like that? Thumbs up. Thumbs up if you can do it like that. Brilliant. Guys, it's getting very close. Okay, it's getting very close. So I hope I get to sleep before it gets that close. Because here it is now, soon 11 p.m. I'm going to cut this, put slideshow on top of it so you guys have something for the longer time to, you know, look at. And then we will be ready to go and I am looking forward. And again, guys, I'm sorry for being so excited. If somebody felt that I was interrupting Scott, don't, I don't believe he felt that. My internet connection hasn't been the best. And believe me, He's excited. We are excited. That guy knows what he does. Believe me, he knows what he does. I asked the right questions, guys. Believe me, I did my, I did my homework. See you tomorrow. See you on the top. A good night to you. Love you all. Bye.